Henry Klepper here again, maker and designer of interference fit knives for another round of knife testing. Um, these are all knives uh, offered up to test by Jim, um, a worker and guide here at um, Monster Lake Ranch, just south of Cody, Wyoming. He uh, saw the results of that last test and he was interested in having some of his knives brought out here and uh, abused. <laughs> on barbed wire the same way that mine were. Um, so what we've got here is a custom uh, made knife 1095. You can see the marker on the knife is knives by hand. Um, we've got another one here. It's a Dawson G3. Uh, should also be uh, like a 1095 high carbon steel. Um, and then a Topps uh, slicing knife. I'm not sure the model number on that. Uh, looks like if we look at it, it says T1014. Um, so I'll need to do a little looking and find out what I can find out about that in the future. But if you're interested in looking it up on your own, then you can find out what that knife is. So we're going to do the same test on these three knives that we did on the others. Um, we're going to be batoning them through barbed wire just to see how the edges hold up. Um, all being high carbon steels, these should hold up fairly well. You can see the the blades are generally very thick, um, very thick grind angles. Um, so there should be a lot of strength in these blades. I'm not expecting chipping or damage like that. Um, although it's possible, much like the other 1095 knife that I tested earlier, um, we might see some edge rolling. So we'll kind of just see what happens. So let me get set up here. Okay, got barbed wire wrapped back around. All right, we'll start off with the one that I think will end up taking the most uh, damage comparatively. Um, it's gonna be this little tops knife. Um, it is a very wide grind, so I'm not expecting a lot of damage. Um, it starts off, looks like fairly sharp. Jim must do a good job sharpening his knives. So we're gonna take this little guy along the back edge here and we're going to see how it does Henry. yep just so testing some knives okay so you can see it notched the barbed wire real good um, if you look at the edge looks like there's a very small amount of edge rolling um, it held up pretty well I don't really see any chipping to speak of um, but you can see in this view the edges rolled slightly back away from the camera um, held up pretty well i did not make it through the barbed wire but it did notch it good much like the rest of them have that didn't make it through next we'll t test the dawson g3 this is a very nice looking knife um, high carbon he's kept it oiled, my car to handles. Um, I like the looks of this knife, you know, not, not the sort of knife I would generally carry around, but it's a really, looks like a really well-made knife. Um, good build quality. So let's see how this holds up to batoning through the barbed wire. Get it along the back edge here. There we go. You can see it notched it as well and no real edge damage that I can see other than maybe it slightly rolled the edge very very minorly and it, unlike some of the other ones instead of that edge rolling going deep into the edge and affecting it you know maybe a hundred thousandths from the very tip of the edge this one appears to only have rolled just maybe the first ten thousandths of an inch and all it has done is basically barely shined up that edge back here where I batoned it against the barbed wire. So that held up really well. Um, it did take the sharpness off of it because of that rolled edge, but I bet if you had a steel, it'd be very easy to, to stand that edge back up and continue using this knife uh, out in the field. So very good result out of the Dawson G3. Um, and this appears to have a narrower grind than the last one we're about to test. Um, so that, 
that's pretty good. Um, visibly, it looks like behind the edge, this knife is probably about 30 thousandths of an inch, or maybe a little bit more. So it is a is a thicker grind than some of the other knives. So, very last knife will be this Knives by Hand Custom. Um, I believe he said he bought it at a knife show down in Texas from a custom maker. Um, this looks like a really nice kind of survival knife, you know. This is the sort of thing you could take out in the wilderness and reasonably expect to build a very nice shelter out of and um, then be able to go and kill a rattlesnake, which this guy's actually done with this knife in the last week. He uh, threw it down and killed a rattlesnake that was hanging out around their horse pen. So um, this is a working knife. Let's see how well it works on some barbed wire. It drove the barbed wire deep into the, the wood there, much like the other ones. And looking at the edge, let's see here. Looks like we've got, a, much like the last one, just the tiniest bit of edge rolling. Just very, very minor roll to the very tip of the edge. Maybe it extends about 15 or 20 thousandths from the very edge of the, the blade. Um, does not seem to have dulled this one quite as bad as the last one did. Um, the edge roll, although extending slightly deeper, does not appear to have moved it out of alignment as much as the last one. So this one, much like the last one, would be very easy to hit on a steel and bring it back into alignment and keep working with this out in the field. So that's a very good knife, I think, if you're looking for a heavy-use knife out in the wilderness that you can rely on not breaking on you no matter what you got to do with it. So, Jim, thank you very much for letting me test your knives. I will go now and resharpen them for you, and I will uh, continue doing these tests. Um, again... All this has been done out at Monster Lake Ranch in Wyoming. Um, me and my family have been out here on vacation, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a beautiful scenery, as you can see in the background, and I can't think of a better place to come out and enjoy some knife testing. Um, hope you enjoyed the short video, and hopefully you'll watch some more.